The first Galaxy Fold was revolutionary. A smartphone and tablet in one that fits in your pocket. The design was loved by early adopters, but fans wanted a little more. The front screen was a little small, and the inside display had a pretty big cutout to house those internal cameras. Along came the second model, which fixed these issues. The outside display was now full size, the inside notch was reduced to a punch hole, with a silky smooth 120Hz display. This was a fantastic revision, and left me wondering what they could possibly improve on. Well, now we arrive at the third rendition of the Galaxy Fold. And again, they've fixed all the small gripes that the fans had with the second generation. Let's have a look at the Galaxy Fold 3 as well as the new Galaxy Flip to see what's new and if these devices are worth the hype they've been getting. The first thing you notice out of the box is how great the phone feels in the hand. When closed, it has a candy bar-like shape and it's very easy for your thumb to fit the full width of the display. Almost similar to a TV remote, it's comfortable to scroll and completely usable as a full-fledged phone using only the outside display. This is great for quickly popping your phone out of your pocket to check a notification or reply to a message while you're out and about. With the Galaxy Fold 3, the outside display has now been upgraded to 120Hz to match the inside display, which feels fantastic to scroll and browse and a noticeable upgrade over the Fold 2's 60Hz. The only thing that took me a bit to get used to was the keyboard narrowness, and when trying to type with two hands, I would make a few mistakes. However, like anything, it doesn't take too long to adjust, and I find that Samsung's fantastic swipe keyboard most of the time is what I use now for the outside display. Flipping open the device, we get a beautiful 120Hz internal screen, and this time it's noticeably smoother to the touch than the Fold 2's. Again, we get Samsung's amazing ultra-thin glass, However, it's still a lot softer than your usual phone screen, so you have to be careful with fingertips. A trick I found useful was when closing the phone, make sure you don't press on the inside of the display and rather the solid bottom edge. But in saying that, this display is strong enough to support the new S Pen. And the S Pen makes a lot of sense on a device with this much screen real estate. You get far more than the Galaxy Note displays. Unfortunately, unlike the Note, there is nowhere to keep the S Pen. Samsung have thought of this and they offer some cases with slots for holding the new S Pen on the back. The beautiful thing about this phone is the consistency of the software. The screen will adapt to the content you open on the front display and vice versa, keeping the whole experience very consistent to your situation. Everything feels very strong and solid. The hinge is noticeably sturdier than the previous fold and the overall dimensions of the device have been slimmed down. It's thinner, lighter, and feels great in your hand and in your pocket. Something you may have also noticed is the inside screen now has an under-display camera, which makes browsing the web and watching movies far more enjoyable. It's actually pretty surprising how big of a difference this made to using the inside display. However, the camera quality is noticeably softer and not as detailed. On the Fold 2, I didn't use this camera much at all. I mostly just used it for the face unlock, and for that, it works really well. In the rare case I did take a selfie, it was usually on the front display. But this could be something worth considering as the big screen would be useful for selfie takers. Another big upgrade is the whole device is now water resistant with IPX8. It's amazing how they figured out how to do this on a folding phone and you no longer have to worry if you're caught running to a car in the rain. Inside is the brand new Snapdragon 888 paired with 12 gigs of RAM, storage in either 256 or 512. So you're getting top of the range performance as you would expect for this price point. Triple rear cameras, 12 megapixel wide angle, ultra wide and a 2 times telephoto. As well as 10 megapixel and 4 megapixel selfie cameras. The cameras produce great images, while not having the super zoom functions. I had no problems with the pictures and videos that came off this device. They seem clear and colourful. Battery isn't too bad, I usually get a day using both outside and inside displays. It seems to last slightly longer than the previous model, which is surprising with the power of the new AAA chip, so no complaints. And speaking of that new chip, gaming on this phone is a dream and probably one of the things I love the most about this form factor. To be able to pop this out of your pocket, fold out the tablet screen and have a quick game of League of Legends feels like you're living in the future. One UI 3.1 is nice, it's been refined for use of the internal screen, it handles multi-window apps like a dream which is another favourite thing about this device. You can also prop the phone up to watch some YouTube while eating lunch or taking photos which is something else unique to these devices. 
But the Galaxy Fold 3 isn't the only new addition to Samsung's new folding lineup. The Galaxy Flip 3 is a mini pocket-sized flip phone brought into the modern day. I like the compact nature of this form factor. With a weight of only 183 grams, the Flip 3 is slightly thinner, shorter and narrower, again with the new refined hinge. Another solid and sturdy feeling phone. Unlike the original Flip's outer display, this year we get a much larger screen. It's great for a quick glance to check the time or any notifications. Another upgrade over the original Flip is the 6.7 inch OLED screen is twice as fast at 120Hz. There is still a crease you can feel where the screen folds, but it's only visible when the screen is off and at certain angles. It's really something you just forget about once you start using it. This device has also been brought into the water resistant era with IPX8, which is another massive addition. We get the same Snapdragon 888 paired with 8 gigs of RAM. So again, you're getting top performance. There's two outer cameras on this year's model, a 12 megapixel wide and ultra wide lens as well. They take great photos and videos, plus with the addition of propping them up on the table, there's also a handy sort of built-in tripod. Great whether you're making TikToks or on a video call. It's a great little phone, with the only downside I could really find was that the glass exterior seems to slip along surfaces pretty easily. But to be honest, you're probably going to have a case on it anyway. If you're bored of that big slab of a phone and you're looking for something a little more exciting, I think the Z Flip 3 is a great choice. I think both these devices are solid improvements over last year's models. If you have the previous models, I'm not sure if these additions are enough to be worthy of a full price upgrade. However, these are perfect devices if you're looking to break into folding phones. Refined products for the masses, and I think Samsung have done a great job. You can check them out either in store or online at pbtech.co.nz. I'm Eli from PBTech, remember to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.